Welcome back. It is time now for this week's Financial Friday, and we're talking about giving to charities. Here's Greg Harrison with today's Harrison Financial Management Financial Friday. When it comes to charitable gifting, you need to work with your tax preparer as well as your investment advisor when it comes to what strategies you want to utilize. I've worked with quite a few nonprofits myself, whether serving on their boards or actually working with those nonprofits to obtain funds from um, certain investors that want to benefit for tax purposes. So there have been some clients of mine that have started up nonprofits living in the Bible Belt in the southern Arkansas. Many of our nonprofits can tend to be faith-based, but a lot of my clients or outside investors do know that if they give back within their community to those nonprofits, they know that those uh, financial benefits go to benefit somebody directly within their community, go back in and uh, benefit directly. That's similar to the United Way of Union County, where 100% of our funds actually goes back in to benefit people here within Union County, versus if you give at the national level where it can be anywhere between 50 to 80%, that's actually going to be a benefit, you know, versus of higher salaries and things of that nature. But um, Quite a few of my clients look at trying to give to their church, especially with their required minimum distribution that they have to take now after the age of 73. So if they don't take those funds out, then they're taxed at a 50% rate. If they take those funds out, they are taxed at their earned income tax bracket. But if they're able to give to their church or to a nonprofit that's of, that's of intrinsic value to them, then that helps save their tax burden for that next tax year, and it actually goes to help benefit an entity that is a value to them and that nonprofit is able to benefit and provide the services that they need to help benefit the overall community.